Hello everybody. In this video I would like to show you what's new in Match version 3.3. One of the main new features is the crystallite size estimation based on the Scherer formula and we'll now see how this works in detail. Match uses the Scherer formula for calculating the crystallite size. So this is the formula and these are the meanings of these uh, parameters and variables. Most important is that for the calculation of the crystallite size, the width of the peaks, the full width at half maximum, needs to be determined. And it should also be noted that there is an inverse correlation between the width of the peaks and the crystallite size. So the larger the width of the peaks, the smaller the crystallite size. Most important is also that the width must only originate from the sample effects and not from the instrument. So if you take a diffraction peak, a part of the width of the peak is contributed by the instrument and the remaining part is contributed by the sample. So this green contribution, this is what we need for the formula. It is necessary to know the instrument contribution to peak broadening before applying the Scherer formula. In the end you have to subtract the contribution from the instrument from the peak width determined in the experiment in order to obtain the sample width. This means that you have to create a so-called instrumental standard before you can use this Scherer formula for the calculation of the crystallite size. How does this work in practice? First of all, we will now load a diffraction pattern from a sample of lanthanum hexaboride that we will use as an instrumental standard. So I will import the diffraction pattern and set the appropriate wavelength. So this is the pattern and now I will start to add the peaks manually in order to get them as accurate as possible. So we'll start here, zoom this point, switch on the vertical bar cursor in order to get the position right and then I keep the control key on my keyboard pressed and press the right mouse button. Oops, this was not really correct so I will go back and shift the position slightly. By the way, another cool option of the new match version is the possibility to modify the width of the peak using the mouse. So if you mark a peak and move the mouse cursor over it, you can modify the width of the peak just by turning the mouse wheel. Okay, let's switch back to creating the standard. I will go now move on to the next peak press the control button again and press the right mouse button to edit and I will repeat these steps till I have added all the peaks of the standard and the last one okay we'll get, go back to full view so now I have added all the peaks for the diffraction pattern but it is really important to get the width of the peaks right so I will run a profile fitting for these peaks now. The fitting of the width of the peaks is already enabled and the intensity I will also switch on the fitting of the positions of the peaks to get them really right and now run the profile fitting calculation. So see we have now an R value of 13.9 percent and now it has been reduced to 11.7%. So we now have accurate values for the width of the peaks. And now I can use the new feature, crystallite size estimation, here in the tools menu. And if I do so for the very first time, like in this case, Match will give some explanations and uh, ask you to add an instrumental standard. And yes, I'm sure I would like to do this now. 
and I would also like to use the current experimental data as a new standard. So these values have now been copied from these experimental data I've just fitted. I could also modify them manually in this dialog or create a new standard and all things like this. Import a diffraction pattern from some kind of peak list. But for now I would like to leave it as it is. Press OK. And now I will save it, just giving the formula sum. OK, this, this is for now. I can now open the diffraction pattern for which I would like to run the analysis of the crystallite sizes. I will take this one here. And now I can run the peak searching as it is run by default. And again, I would like to refine the peaks by profile fitting in order to get as accurate values for the width of the peaks and the peak positions as possible. And now that I've done so, you can see that the R value has decreased again. I can run this crystallite size estimation command. And now we get the value of the crystallite size for the selected peaks. And this is uh, 1300 angstroms about. Let's just take a closer look at all these dialog elements. You can see here this is the selection of the standard that we have recorded before. This is the value of the Scherer constant that is also part of this Scherer formula. And in this table you see all the peaks of the diffraction pattern along with their width, the width of the standard and the calculated sample width and the crystallite sizes. Match automatically marks the peaks between 30 and 50 degrees, which is most appropriate for crystallite size estimation for the calculation of the average value. But you can also modify these peaks and include other peaks you would like to use in this uh, analysis. So this is all for the crystallite size estimation. You can get more information from the online help for example, by pressing this button, there's more background information and more details about the handling of this dialogue. Another new feature in Match version 3.3 is the representation of these peak positions here below the diffraction pattern. In order to show you what has been improved, I will just start at this point where I've just left and uh, run the phase analysis. This is the normal way the peak positions are displayed as you know it up to now. But if you open this displaying of the graphics options and switch over from positions only for the peak positions to positions and relative intensities and press OK, then you will see that the representation has changed. You now see not only the peak positions, but also the relative intensities of the peaks so that you can get a more detailed impression on which peaks are really prominent in a reference diffraction pattern and which are rather small, so they are not so important. This leads me to another new feature in version 3.3 and this is the displaying of the stick patterns in the data sheet. If you just mark one of these entries for example here and press Ctrl D in order to display the data sheet then you will see that by now a stick pattern of the diffraction pattern is included in the data sheet and you can toggle the displaying of this uh, stick pattern here on the data sheet tab of the options dialog. If you remove this hook here and press OK, then this stick pattern has gone. The final new feature I would like to demonstrate is the viewing of the crystal structures in the diamond software. I will now select the matching phases here for this diffraction pattern and run a Riedfeld refinement calculation.
Now that the calculation has finished and has converged, I can mark one or more of these match list entries here and press this little diamond icon here in the toolbar. And now this crystal structure is opened in diamond directly and you can see here not only the reference entry crystal structure but also the refined structure. If I now click in here and I can toggle between these two structures and see the differences here in diamond. So these were the most prominent new features in Match version 3.3. Thank you for your attention.